Hello, I'm Lewis and I'm going to show you how to build your own Arduino powered LED mood lamp. With interchangeable shades and stems printable in any color, this is a very personalizable project. Once complete, you'll be able to cycle through various LED lighting patterns using the discrete button on the back. There is also a switch to pause the effect at any moment and another to switch the LEDs off. If you would like to build your own mood lamp, then you can order a kit from Electromaker, which will include the components you need to assemble your own. The files for the 3D prints can be downloaded from their website, along with the code required to run on the Arduino Nano. If you would like to order a kit, then you can either follow the link up here or press the order kit button on the projects page. The kit contains half a meter of Adafruit NeoPixels on a black flexible PCB, an Arduino Nano to control the LEDs, two switches. One will be used to turn the LEDs on and off and the other will use to pause the patterns. A momentary button to toggle the patterns on the LEDs, a mini breadboard with some self-adhesive backing, a female JST connector with three 20 centimeter lengths of wire attached, four screws plus one spare just in case you lose one, some electrical wire to connect everything together, and a USB cable to upload the code and empower the project when it's complete. There are five printed components to this project. I have printed mine in a mixture of PLA and PETG, as that's just what I had to hand. You can print yours from the same materials or others, such as ABS. As for the colours, that's up to you. I quite like this monochrome combination of black, silver and whites, which then really allow the colours to shine through when I turn on the LEDs. I printed the base with a layer height of 0.15mm and orientated it upside down on the print bed. The stem was printed again at 0.15mm with no supports or brim. If you have trouble with yours not adhering to the print bed well, then do add a brim in your slicing software. The shade was printed at 0.15mm with no infill and two perimeters. This is to increase its opacity so that the light from the LEDs can shine through. The cover was printed at 0.2mm. The LED holder was printed at 0.2mm, but you would be fine to increase the layer height if you wanted to reduce the print time for this piece. Talking about LEDs, let's start by gluing our LED strip onto the column of our LED holder. You can use a glue of your choosing. Hot melt glue works fine, but you'll need to be generous when applying it. I'm going to use some super glue to fix mine on, as this delivers a more permanent and stronger hold. Thread the wires through the hole at the bottom, and before you apply the glue, wrap the LEDs around the column to the top, so you can get a good idea of how far apart to space them. Once you're happy, unravel it and repeat again whilst applying some glue this time. Connect the female JST connector to the end of the LEDs and thread this down through the stem. Now, glue the LED holder to the top of the stem. Once set, thread the wires through the center of the base and now glue the stem to the base. At this stage in the project, your mood lamp should look a lot like my one here. We'll now turn our attention to the switches and buttons, which will prepare to go inside the base of the lamp. Prepare two 10 cm lengths of wire and solder these to the center leg of each switch. Take the red wire coming from our LEDs, this is the 5 volt power connection, and solder it to one of the unused legs on one of the switches. Repeat this again for the white wire coming from the LEDs, which is for their digital input. Prepare two more 10cm lengths of wire, and this time 
we will solder them to the two diagonally different legs on the momentary push button. Later, this will be used to cycle through the available LED patterns. Use some glue to fix these into position. Be careful to only glue the outside of the button or switch to the base, and not to get glue on the button or sliding mechanism itself, or it may not work very well. It doesn't matter which switch is glued into which hole. Add the Arduino Nano to the top of the breadboard and connect to the USB cable. Connect the other end to your PC and then start the Arduino IDE. Before we can upload the code though, there are a few things we need to do. First, you need to install Adafruit's NeoPixel library. To do this, from the sketch menu, go to include library and then manage libraries. In the search, type NeoPixel. Look for Adafruit NeoPixel by Adafruit and install the latest version. After it's installed, you can click the close button. You will also need to install the WS2812FX library. There is a link to this library at the top of the code or you can type in the following URL into your web browser. Once you have downloaded it, extract the files to your IDE's Libraries folder. The last bit of code you will need is the one written for this project. You can find it over on the projects page at electromaker.io. Open it in the Arduino IDE. Ensure you have the board type Arduino Nano selected and the processor ATmega328P old bootloader selected from the tools menu. Now press the upload button in the Arduino IDE. It's in the top left. You can now disconnect the USB cable from the PC. We'll leave the other end attached to the Arduino to help us position the breadboard in the base of our 3D print. Before you can do this, you'll need to remove the self-adhesive backing and attach it to the underside of the base. Be careful to avoid the wiring coming in from the LEDs. We will now connect the remaining wires to the Arduino. I'm going to be using the points on the breadboard to connect mine, but if you'd prefer to solder yours to the Arduino, that's fine. If you choose to use the breadboard as I am, then you will find it easier to insert the wires if you tin them by applying some solder to the strands at the end of the wire. This will make them easier to insert into the breadboard. The remaining wires are connected as follows. The switch connected to the LED's red wire is connected to 5 volts on the Arduino. The other switch, which is connected to digital in via the white wire, is connected to D6 on the Arduino. The black lead coming from the LED's ground connection is connected to ground on the Arduino. One wire from the momentary button is also connected to ground. The other wire from the momentary button will be connected to D2. If you connect the USB cable to a powered USB port, this could be a battery pack, wall plug or computer, the LEDs should now light up. Check all our wiring is correct by pressing the momentary button to change patterns. One of the switches should turn the LEDs either on or off, whilst the other will pause the pattern when toggled. As long as everything works, we can add the cover to the base using four of the M3 bolts. The USB lead passes through the slot at the end. And now all that's left to do is to add a lampshade to the top of your project, which is as easy as just lowering it in place. Voila, your mood lamp is complete. I hope you've enjoyed building this project. If you have, why not take a look at some of the other kits available from Electromaker, such as this disco helmet. If you'd like to build one of these and you don't yet have the electronic components you need, 
then don't forget you can order a kit with everything you need from Electromaker's website. Thanks for watching, until next time, ciao for now.